So it's four A's. Uh, two guys are in the permanent spot, similar to what Taves and Kane were last year. It is Jones and Murphy this year wearing the permanent A's. So every single game, you will see an A on the chest of Seth Jones and Connor Murphy. And then it will be a flippy floppy between Nick Felino and Corey Perry uh, rotating that third A, depending on the game. We saw that last year with Jones and Murphy, where Murphy wore it on the road because of the respect and familiarity thing. Jones is a little more of the newcomer wore it at home. And gentlemen, I think interesting was Luke Richardson's quote. And, and Johnny, you so eloquently put it in here, our rundown for us. Richardson said, he says, I think it's going to be Corey, in reference to Corey Perry, at home for the first half of the season and Nick on the road, Nick Felino on the road for the first half of the season. Then we'll flip flop that. I think that's kind of cool because this is an instance where both players are newcomers. Both players are well-respected veterans for, in my opinion, different reasons. But both of them are going to get an opportunity to wear A's both on the road and at home. I think that's a respect thing for both of these guys. But it also just shows the the amount of leadership they're going to command in any situation, right? Early on in the season on the road, oh, a, a call doesn't go to the Hawks' way. Yes, Connor Murphy is going to be there. Yes, Seth Jones is going to be there. But, like, how good does that look when a former captain like Nick Foligno is there in that conversation, too? Same goes for on the other side with Perry, right? Yes, he was never a captain in his career, but he wore an A in Anaheim through all those great years when Getzlaff was was the team captain. He's well-respected around the league. Hell, he's even feared around the league by some people. So having a little bit of each flair for over the course of the season with both of these guys getting to rotate that A, I think it's going to be good for the team. I think it's going to be good for both of the players to be a voice of the team going forward. And gentlemen, I, I know we're not looking this far ahead to trade deadline yet, but the fact that they're going to flip it halfway through, it makes me almost think that neither one of these guys are getting moved mid-year unless they're having egregiously good years and want to be moved. Because for them to be noted early on in the year as, hey, we're going to, this is our 82 game plan. We're going to flip flop it halfway through. It almost makes me think the Blackhawks are going to use this year as truly a building year and not just a sell off for assets year. And these two guys are going to be here come the last game of the season in order to make sure they properly instill that hashtag culture that we're talking about right here on screen over the course of an 82 game season. It's a good, good point, Ron. I didn't really think of it in that vein. I love that you brought that up because I was thinking about that with the quote too, Ron, that, you know, they'll flip halfway through the year and you know somebody could get shortchanged if there's a trade, you know, mm-hmm. that doesn't dispel the fact that one of these guys or both of them might want to go to a contender. Maybe their Absolutely. agent comes out and says, Hey, like the part of this deal was, you know, we're only here for whatever. And this, this could all just be uh, a comment that, uh, Richardson made right now to the media just to you know put a blanket statement on what their plan is but one of the things that I've thought about a lot with this and I mentioned I love that third line I think it's a really really good third line that people are going to be a- afraid to play against um, despite the the defense being somewhat rather inexperienced and has a lot of holes and and Peter Morazic. I think if you see this team exceed its expectations throughout the first half of the year, you can put yourself in this. I don't it's not talking about playoffs. We're not talking about playoffs yet. Playoffs. Playoffs. But you, you you can see this team have a successful season where maybe Felino and, and Perry are not moved. Uh and they finish it out uh the 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 remainder of this season. For some odd reason, I, I told this to Ron the other day, it's going to be really difficult to see the Corey Perry jersey start to sell. They're already selling them in the atrium, Johnny. But it might be very hard if, if Corey true. Perry His, is that asshole that's yeah. on your team that you fall in love with, despite everything else. And Pat Kermiski is probably going to text me I, some very, very nasty stuff after I say this. But – there's a chance that Tony Marchese doesn't make it out of this season without purchasing a Corey Perry jersey. Wow. What, what happens? What happens? Because that is big time. What happens when Corey Perry becomes that kind of player for your team that you like so much that Pat Comiskey buys a Corey Perry jersey? That's the heartbreaking question we got to ask. That's that's a tough sell, in my opinion. Um, we know our guy <laughs> Pat I mean, didn't we have a full episode over the summer called – Fuck Corey, Fuck Corey Perry, Perry featuring. And he backed down, he backed down to this man right here, Ron Luce, 
and admitted during that show that uh, there there was some benefit to to Corey Perry being on this roster. Yeah, it's true. Although I don't know if he's gonna you know go full in and buy the Corey yeah. Perry jersey. I just want to see I, it though. I think I think you know what I think we what should happen, Tony, is if you do succumb to that purchase and and go we, for the number ninety four Perry jersey. We 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 get Pat over to take a nice little picture with it on and a big smile and you know a cheese. He'll have a bush light I, in one hand because it's it's Pat. It'll be perfect. I was thinking to even do that, we're gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to outlast him for the night and wait until he's passed out and then drape it over him when he's sleeping <laughs> on Tony's couch in the garage. That's that's what I was thinking. That's where I thought you were going with that, but that's no, where I was but that's going, even so. better. That's an even better idea. That's an even yeah. better idea. So we'll, we'll see if we can get our enforcer Pat Comiskey in that. But Tony, you know, the interesting to even think that because if you told me that it's time capsule, even like five shit, even last year at this time, because we didn't know Corey Perry would be around here, um, I would have said you're crazy. But such is the case here as we preview the 2023-24 Blackhawks season. We appreciate everybody tuning in on YouTube here. Uh, jump in the comments. Drop it here. Uh, yeah, me- measuring success for the season. Kirk says, I'd rather see Bedard put up 40 to 45 goals and us miss the playoffs than have him score 25 and they go for a playoff push. I think that's fair uh, expectation. And, you know, measuring success, I think, is going to be very subjective across the board, depending on what you're looking for um, this year.